watch it. Watch, watch so. <coughs> um, who here is in a post-lunch coma? Slight. All right, so I'll be asking you lots of questions during the presentation. <coughs> um, Welcome to DribbleGovCon. Uh, it's been a couple years since I've had a chance to present. Usually I'm giving trainings on like component-based design, pattern lab, anything that's cool in the, in the front end space. Um, so I figured when we, we finally got all back together again, I would uh, throw my hat in the ring. And so thank you for the for DribbleGovCon for having me back to present. I obviously didn't piss everybody off last time. So, um, so what are we gonna cover today? So today we're gonna cover three things and uh, cover them a little bit. Um, top level. I'm not going to go too uh, deep into the details on things because I want everybody to be able to make up their own decisions on what the right tools are to use when it comes to, to Drupal. Um, the, the thing, three things to point out though is, is what we're going to cover is US web design system and I, I have a couple questions for folks when we get to that. Component based design, atomic design, molecular design, I mean you've, you've heard it uh, you know, a couple different ways this Sunday <coughs> and then Something that's that's new that um, at Design Group created um, for the past year and a half, something called layout paragraphs that I'm a huge proponent of. <clears throat> and so we're going to cover those three things today. So if our, those three things are not of interest, the door is right there. <laughs> so who am I? <laughs> so my name is Chaz Chumley. I'm a UCLA Health. I'm a lead web platform engineer. I've lived in the DC area since 2009. I've got 15 plus years of Drupal development. Um, I've worked for many of the agencies that are in the area from Forum One to Bixel to TOD to Centratech um, uh, to U Group, which was formerly Chief, which then became IntelliBridge. <laughs> and so I, I know a lot of people in, in, the, in the community um, and so have had the pleasure of working with lots of different developers, project managers, product owners, designers, uh, which has kind of really helped formulate um, my career over the past 15 years. In that, I've played many roles. I've been a technical architect, I've been a front end architect, been an author, did uh, two and a half, three books on, back on Drupal 8, um, a tr trainer, and then consultant. And so, I'm um, happy to answer questions on anything and everything Drupal. So, US Web Design System, I would say, that's the, how many people here that's new? US Web Design System, right. Obviously, we, li we li live and work and, and breathe in a government space, so the US Web Design System is something that was uh, mandated a while back ago for any um, federal government website, states, websites sometimes um, as well, um, on something that kind of helps make sure we're not off on the rails on every single web project we do, okay? In, in short terms, it's a design system for the federal government. Um, it allows us to, for us to follow some principles and some guidance and for us to be able to design and build accessible, which was the, the big one there, um, as well as mobile-friendly government websites. There's a lot of accessibility work has gone into um, the US web design system. I had the pleasure of being embedded on the US web design system team for about six to eight month period when I used to work at Bixel. <coughs> uh, a lot of great folks there. And that team has tremendously grown over the years to where now they have multiple project managers, developers, designers, um, uh, QA, accessibility testing going on behind the scenes. And so this is a true tried and proven design system. So um, if you're getting ready to be involved in a product or project um, that requires this, um, there is Tons of documentation and information at designsystem.digital.gov. All right, so I told you I was going to ask questions, so break up the lunchtime coma. <clears throat> so, who here uses the web design system? Okay, and then what role do you play? Meaning, okay, so who, who here are developers? All right, how about designers? Okay, how about product owners? Okay, so those are generally the three audiences that. When you talk about the US web design system that we that cater store. So for developers, you're talking about, um, in the most simplistic terms, an NPM package that has all kinds of customization. There's also a Drupal theme out there that's both Drupal 9 and 10 comp compatible. Um, there's also uh, you know, organizations that have kind of rolled their own that have, that have worked with the US web design system in its infancy. Um, organizations like Forum One, Vixel, 
um, who seem to be one of the, the one of those two organizations that um, were kind of in the early process of having to adopt the U.S. web design system. Civi Actions is, a, is another one that is heavily involved in. If I'm leaving you out, just because I'm not familiar with it. <coughs> um, designers. This was a, something that kind of really opened my eye when I was at Vixel um, because not only does US web design cater toward developers, it really caters toward uh, designers. There's a sketch, there's an Adobe XD, and there's a Figma file that allows you to really get in there and start designing with US web design system before you even start to implement it on, on Drupal. Um, the nice thing about that is it's the way it's built, it's, it's really flexible. Um, and it can apply to any of the government websites you may be working on. And it allows you to use <coughs> as little or as much of the US web design system to, that um, you're wanting to implement. For the product owners, we're talking about key benefits here are compliance from the start. Okay, that's the, the biggest thing we were looking at, especially if you've ever looked at a government contract. <laughs> um, of all the things that you have to like check off when you're actually wor working on it with your with your core um, at you know uh, organizations like USDA and, and the sort. <coughs> um, it's also a proven design solution, so it's it's been used and used and used and used, and it's continuing to iterate as well. So it's not like you're using something that was built, you know, years ago that hasn't um, been improved or had new components added to it. Um, and then, like I said earlier, it has a huge design community behind it. Very, very strong design system community that's very open and receptive to how you may be working with the, the US web design system, um, as well as any suggestions or recommendations you might have, like components that are missing that you want to see added. Um, they're very receptive to taking a look at those and then looking at it, how they would make those uh, both responsive and accessible. Um, and then, Here's here's the one thing that I see that's really kind of a trap when it comes to oh I'm required to use the U.S. web design system. This goes for developers, designers, product owners, and that is they generally go all in, and they're like oh I'm stuck with their colors and 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 their um, you know the way that this header looks or this card looks or this footer looks or this banner looks, and that's not the case. If if you look at the heart of the U.S. web design system, it is a set of guidelines on what to use. And so what I mean by that is use as much or as little as you want to. Don't feel like you need to go all in when you're taking a look at the US web design system. In short, short words, implement what makes sense for the size of project you're on and the timeline of the project that you're on. Um, you know, nowhere does it say you had to use all of it. So that's the one thing to keep in mind. Um, and then just a couple of trusted organizations, um, and this is just from experience. Uh, Forum One's used this for multiple years um, with early adoption with the US web design system. They've actually rolled it into uh, their own pattern lab component based design system, which is really nice. Um, and then Vixel to this day is still embedded with the US web design system team. <coughs> and in fact, um, if you didn't get a chance to, <coughs> these are a couple of the different presentations as well as training that took place um, that will give you more information about the US web design system. Web design system. So Ray Stroud and James, who are actually both embedded, did a session called Gazing at the Stars, how to take the US web design system beyond the limits. Something for you to definitely go back and take a look at if you didn't get a chance to attend that session. Uh, Mike Herschel also did a session on what happens when the US WDS meets single directory components. So taking a look at, okay, now I have the US web design system, I'm interested in components. We've heard of this new thing called SDC, which is single directory components. How do we kind of marry those together to get more bang for our buck? <clears throat> and then going on actually right now, don't leave the room because it's going on right now. <laughs> but there's a practical guide to US web design system training going on right now that the Bixel's giving. So, um, and the reason I bring up these organizations is um, I'm no longer in the agency space, so I'm, I'm over on the educational space. But to me, those are organizations that are very receptive and open to the community. So if you do have questions, by all means, you see one of their, their uh, uh, developers, project managers, designers here at the conference, grab them, ask them any question. They're more than happy to answer those questions. Any questions on high level what US web design system team? Yes? Do you know how it's funded? Um, so it's considered a nonprofit, so. 
That is, that's a question. Actually, it's I still run by HNS? It is. Um, so I, that's so a good question that actually I never really thought about to ask. GAO, I think, HNS under GAO? Yeah. Um, good question, though. I'm happy to find an answer for you. Yeah, another question over here? No? All right, great. Uh, yes. Um, so next thing, component-based design. So this is my passion, my sweet spot. This is what I've been talking about for, I can close the lid on this laptop and talk about all day about what, what comes component-based design. <laughs> so things that come to mind though, if you think about component-based design, if you've never heard the term before, is material design, uh, IBM has a, something called carbon design system, Salesforce. There's plenty of different design systems out there. You could even kind of use that word loosely, when you think of bootstrap or foundation as being design systems, um, I wouldn't go too much into detail um, with that because they, they, they those, those two are kind of set up in a, in a way that's more use it and you really don't kind of roll it into um, custom components and stuff. Um, however, the idea of component-based design is, is just that. It's a concept of designing for the website that you are building, not the pages. And so. One of the traps we used to fall into way back in when, when we, we would look at the page and we would architect based off the page. We wouldn't bother to go look at the other 10 pages, 20 pages, 30 pages to see what was repeating on there, okay? And that's the key, because we want to build manageable, reusable chunks of content, whether you want to call it a widget, whether you want to call it a component, mm -hmm. whether you want to call it a block, whether you want to call it a paragraph type. Um, it, the point is taking a huge step back, looking at your design that you're responsible for building, and, and identifying what's repeating on the page. And when I say repeating, look down to the, the very small, minute level. Button, right? Every website has a button. Does that button look the same across the website? Great, single component. The button look like five different ways? Great, single component. Just has modifications, varieties of that type. And we'll go into a little bit more detail when it comes to component-based design. All right. Flipping it up on you. You've probably have all seen atoms, molecules, organisms, layouts, pages. I give Brad Frost shit about it every single time I run into him. <laughs> because it because once it gets past a certain certain, you know, hierarchy here, it just kind of falls apart. And so I like to think of component based design as elements, components, multiple components together make a composition, then you get into layout, and then you get into pages. So what are examples of that? Element could be your brand, it could be your typography, it could be as simple as a button or a link, it could be an input, it could be a label. Um, so what's a component then, if that's the case? So a component's a collection of those elements. So once you start thinking of Legos, when you start building them on top of each other and start getting larger things, it's kind of the progress, natural progression when you're thinking of component-based design, component-based development. Um, so component is just that, collection of those elements that make up a much bigger reusable item. Uh, whereas a composition is a series of components that make me make up a larger component, but since they're multiple components, I think of them more of a composite or comp composition. <clears throat> and then part of that really that comes into play is layout, because everything needs to have a layout in order for it to look good on the page. And then combining those all together, then you know, I, now I have my home page, now I have my contact page, now I have my team page. <coughs> All right, so questions for you. So who here has used component-based design or has used component-based development? Okay, so a good, a good handful of you. <clears throat> and so this is a question that generally we think component-based design development is usually developer-centric. Center, center, <clears throat> In this case, I kind of went under the roles here because I, I think it's everybody should be responsible for this when you're talking about a project. So. <clears throat> I'm not going to ask the survey again because I saw it from the last time. So, but what I want to do cover on this is the fact that <coughs> developers, designers, and product owners, okay, again, just like the US web design system, <coughs> you don't have to go all in when you're talking about component based design development. What should dictate this for you is the size of the project, the budget of the project. Okay. You can start small, and, and then as you're working across multiple projects, start building up a library of components that you can use. Okay, so if you manage a large website or a series of websites, this 
makes sense to you because you don't want to have to reinvent the same button every single project. You want to be able to take something you've already built, the, the design of it, the HTML for it, the CSS for it, maybe there's some interactivity, the JavaScript for it, and you want to be able to just kind of go grab that and reuse it. Okay, so that's the main principle behind component-based design and development is it allows you to manage this across your platforms, um, and especially in my world at UCLA, you know, it's just not UCLA.edu, it's UCLAHealth.edu, it's med school, it's, it's, you know, hundreds and thousands of websites that, that comprise UCLA. <clears throat> and then if you take it one step back and look at it, California as a whole has a whole UC system, okay? UC San Francisco, UC Davis, UC California, <clears throat> UC San Diego. And so, you know, each of those universities is building their own design system, but one of the concepts that we started talking about is a UC design system that spans across it because the only thing that really changes is the branding. UCLA is blue and gold, you know, UCSF has its colors, UC Davis you know, has its colors. <clears throat> and so it makes really sense to be able to start working collectively um, and, and communicating those across the different UCs. <clears throat> All right, so let's, let's take a look at, okay, Common Based Design, the U US web design system. <clears throat> On, on the US web design system um, section, uh, website, there's a templates landing page section. And this is something that I've seen <laughs> on probably every single website as requires the US web design system is, is this hero in some form or fashion, and then um, the section uh, below it. And so I just want to kind of make sure everybody's on the same page here. And so who here can tell me what makes up this composition? Sean. So, first off, you have you have a button. Okay. You have title. Yep. Text. Yep. The, the description. Yep. Then that that is combined into a component, and and then that background image could be part of that component. Um, I'm guessing that that background image is a field on the same thing. And, and yes, you're correct. And so when we take a look at this, there's all really, you know, all four things really are coming to play here. I, I, I purposely left out one because you, because Sean hit it on, on, on the other, you said this, this technically could be part of this, and, and that's the way that I would generally see this built. And so first you have a layout, right? You have a container here <clears throat> that is then making sure that this call out is being positioned in a certain way. Okay, and then this component itself is the call out. And then there's diff different elements when you break it down with more finite levels over here. So you have an image, right? Whether it's a foreground image or a background image being used, that's up to you how you want to develop or design it. Okay. You have a heading. And this and this is both part of the heading. This is like an alternative variation of the heading. And you know, that's up white with this one being this light blue. You have text and you have a button. And so taking a look at US web design system and how you're breaking it down, and this kind of gets real back to the, like, quit reinventing the wheel. If you know you're gonna have a hero and you're gonna have multiple products, build this hero once and, and bring it in, but I've got to identify. And the US web design system is nice because it has its own <laughs> design system built for us. It has design tokens, colors, layouts, and stuff, and so we don't also don't have to reinvent the container. We don't have to reinvent the layout, the component, the elements to come with it, and then we'll dive deeper and kind of show that to you. Same concept, you know, right below with the section. This, in this case, it's a layout to container, <clears throat> and and you could technically build this as one component. Maybe it's a you know call out or a call to action. But if you really break it down, this is where I said you kind of really have to step back and look at things, and not just jump in and make and make assumptions on things. Is that really this is text? It's a heading. And this is text with two paragraphs. So really these are just text elements and elements from a standpoint of component-based design with a layout, okay? This is a two-column layout, 3070, and we'll actually take a look at actually how we build that. All right, um, again, just, to, just because you're coming to this late on, on a Thursday and, and we're almost done with the conference, I did wanna uh, introduce some sessions and training that were happening during the conference regarding component-based design as well, so you can get a more deeper look into this. So, um, designing content authoring experience, Greg Dunlap, Mike Herschel again, 
um, kind of kind of combined the two concepts with the USWS meets the single directory components. Um, we also there was a con there was a um, session on interactive components using React to make your Drupal site pop. Um, I didn't look at, take a look at this, but if I had to guess, this probably has something involvement with storybooks, and storybooks seems to be popularly built on top of React. Um, and then there uh, was training earlier today by um, Evolving Web on atomic and molecular design with Drupal that used UI patterns, which was interesting. <coughs> All right, layout paragraphs. How many people here use Layout Builder? How many people here hate Layout Builder? Okay. Um, so, at and design, um, Justin, who actually, had, I think he was here giving a session, uh, I haven't seen him, um, built this, con took this concept of, okay, paragraphs, and how do we then take a turn around and, and utilize paragraphs with the Layout Discovery API that Layout Builder utilizes so that we have a much better UX or interface for actually using paragraphs. Because most of our experience with using paragraph types has always been from the node edit screen, right? Or more in the back end, we're adding paragraphs. If we're lucky, maybe we've figured a way to like kind of make things look a little bit better in the back end. <coughs> However, layout paragraphs, mind blown when I, when I first saw this and I was an early adopter and, and it's just <coughs> continuing to have iteration on it, provides a much better user experience <coughs> and it's, and it's I'd say layout builder is built for developers, whereas layout paragraphs is built for marketing, for communications, for um, your guest blog bloggers that are coming in and adding an article that maybe is unpublished, because it gives them this really intuitive drag and drop experience that is very hard to emulate with layout builder, unless anybody here from Acquia. <laughs> <laughs> right? They, they purchased Cohesion DX to make Layout Builder look better, but it's a product, right? So it's the software as a service. They didn't get, make its way into Drupal. And so in order to get Layout Builder to look half decent, I'm being PC today, <laughs> um, you have to add module after module after module, blacklist, whitelisting things, making sure their interface, you know. And then even then, when it flies out on, on, the, on the, the slide out panel there, you're Non-savvy technical users are just like, whoa, whoa, what do I do with this? And so layout paragraphs, the key benefit of this is number one, has an intuitive drag and drop interface. It works with your existing paragraphs and we've been using paragraphs ever since paragraphs came out, sometimes poorly, sometimes done well. You know, on the old nested paragraph days. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, provides a really flexible configuration and, I'm, and I'll show an example of that. Um, but the key point of this allows for non-technical users to add layouts and components to a page. <clears throat> so why not layout builder? Right? I'm not saying Drupal, right? Always 18 different ways to build something. Usually one is wrong, the other 17 are, or I'm sorry, one is right, the other 17 are wrong, and you find out those later down the line <coughs> when you're looking through your code. Simple user experience focused entirely on content authoring and layout paragraphs or layout builder. <coughs> it works with any reference field, so it's extremely flexible. Uh, layout paragraphs provides a true what you see, what you get author experience. And unlike layout builder, it supports nested layouts. Don't go crazy with the nested layouts, but it provides nested layouts. Um, so these are kind of questions I, that, I, that I, I asked. I think I've kind of got a feel for this in, in the room. Um, how many people though here are actually using layout paragraphs? So very, very few of you, okay, great. I want to. <laughs> yes, and, and it's very simple to use, which I, I'll show you. Um, and again, when I talk about layout paragraphs, you're, it's not really a developer that's a user. I mean, it's you're configuring, but, but a site builder could easily configure this. It doesn't require you to get in there and write custom modules or do a lot of you know wiring and configuring of things. Um, but it's also for various roles. If you're a product owner, maybe you're responsible for being the customer success manager for your organization. So you're, so you're also filling the product owner role. And so you want to manage internal governance. This really allows you to have structured content that's done in such a way that you can have a very flexible layout and make sure nobody just completely blows up the page 
changes the background of something to pink with the text of red and now you have accessibility nightmares and all that to go with it. <clears throat> so I'm going to go through some real quick slides. I'm going to go into demo because if you've seen in my, my sessions before, I hate to stay in slides too long. <clears throat> um, so it, it's just like any other module, okay? Um, layout paragraphs has a dependency on paragraphs. Paragraphs has a dependency on entity reference revisions, but simply by installing layout paragraphs, you will get all the other dependencies and, and or submodules that need to go with it. So it's these two that you need to install. Layout paragraphs, paragraphs. <clears throat> And then creating a layout paragraph, when I think about the first thing you need to create, you're only really creating one layout paragraph. That's it. That's how simple it is. And you're creating what's called, I generally could name it section. You could call it layout if you want. What it's doing is it's, it's taking that paragraph type, saying, hey, I need to know about layout discovery and layout API. And just like with Layout Builder, how you get a one column, two column, three column you can, can expose those to layout paragraphs so that they also then can turn around and use those, which is a huge benefit because then you can create additional layouts in Twig that are then discoverable. <clears throat> and so when I create a layout paragraph, I create, usually create one called section. I then choose the available layouts. I then add in any reference to the content type that I want to use this on. So generally, at UCLA, we've kind of structured our, our page content type to be the one that has the full flexibility of using layout paragraphs. <clears throat> um, but once you have that in place, then it's a matter of, and here's the key, disabling that content field from the node edit. So go to manage form, go down and drag it down to disable, because guess what? You don't want to see it on the node edit form because where you're going to see it instead is actually on the manage display. We're taking the back end with this and we're bubbling it up to the front end, which has some some gotchas you're gonna need to work know about. But there's a format here by, um, that you're able to do using it's called layout paragraph builder. It's tagged as experimental, but I'll tell you what, I have it in production with over 200 plus sites at UCLA and it's not broke today. So <clears throat> I'd say it's, it's stable even though they still have it marked as experimental. Also I'm in the configuration here, um, you can specify how many levels of nesting you want. So a section can be let nested inside a section and that has its benefits. Once you do that, when you go to a page, this is what it looks like. And so let's flip out of here and let's actually go take a look at what this looks like. So under structure, content types, basic page under the fields here, I have this field that I created called content, okay? This field is reference, is a paragraph field, okay? It is referencing a paragraph type that I created called section. And you can see here that all I got to do is say this is a layout paragraph, so I check off the, the, the box there and then automatically have the ability to specify the various layouts that I wanted to be able to use. And these are all out of the box? So these are all out of the box except for this one right here. Um, that I created ahead of time just for the sake of time for our, our demo, um, which is going to give me um, that, we saw that section US Web WS component where it's like 3070, that's that two column one two right there, that's there, we'll take a look at that. We out of box, you, you get whatever is currently there, so which is going to be one column, two column, two column bricks, three column 25, 50, 25, and three column 33, 34, 33, but making the layout, and I'll show this to you in a code, it's, it's very simple to be able to do to then have that be available to that. So once you added, actually added that, then it's just a matter of what are the different paragraphs that I want to be able to use with layout paragraphs. So if I go back to paragraph types, <coughs> I've created two for the sake of being able to build out what we saw with the hero and with the, um, that section element. Okay, so I've, I've built a hero paragraph type and I built this a text paragraph type. Okay. Text paragraph type simply has a reference to um, text format, formatted long field, so I have a WYSIWYG available for the user. And then the hero <coughs> is just structured content. Okay, so if we take a look at this real quick. <coughs> has an image field, okay, which I'm gonna turn around and use as a background image, but you give the user the ability to actually add an image. It has the heading, a heading alternative, it has the teaser, and then a link field, which I just called call to action. Okay, so those two paragraph types are gonna be able to be utilized inside of the layout paragraphs. And so where do I specify that when, that, when after I've turned that on? 
So if I go back to content types, basic page, and say edit, I've, I've said exclude, so that means everything that comes in here is something that you can use inside of layout paragraphs. But as you added additional paragraph types, if you obviously you want to be able to like limit this down, you can, or exclude it down, you can. But as I'm adding these paragraph types, these are going to be available. So this is where the magic really comes in. So if I say content, add content, basic page, look how, look how simple that node edit form now looks. Ooh. Okay? And literally just giving it a title so that the URL alias, if I have it set up, can go ahead and generate the page for me, right? And so I will call this um, presentation. And then when I hit save, the user automatically that comes to a page like this. So this is like mind, mind blowing user experience. Like, where has this been all my life, Drupal? Because now. Is this published? It's published. The unpublished too, though, would actually be the same. You just right. you'd have your 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 pinkish background or whatever Drupal Core thought was a great color to come out with for unpublished content. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, who I've rightest offended. Uh, yeah, the salmon color, I guess. Um, but an end user, someone that has no idea what Drupal is, other than you showed them, hey, go hit node, add content, page, give it a title. When they land here, it's self-explanatory. It says right here, you haven't created any content yet. Start creating content. So when you click on start creating content, and you can you can theme this too, and I'll show, I'll show you if we have time um, how it looks at UCLA. It says, well, the only thing I can do is add a section. Great, so let me add a section. That should look familiar if you use layout builder, right? You've, you've seen, I can choose a layout. But this is all in the front, so I'm on a slide out panel. So I'm gonna say, you know what? I'm gonna add a one column layout. Once I have that, <coughs> You're going to notice a couple of different things here. So number one, this is my section, right? But, my, but I can do all kinds of things, which just blow my mind too with layout paragraphs. I can, if I want to duplicate this whole section, I click on this button, I can, it'll just completely keep adding it, okay? If I want to edit it, I can edit it. If I want to drag it, drop it, I can. And by the way, this is accessible, so this is keyboard navigable. So I can move keyboard and use arrow keys to move things up and down on the page. <coughs> So I have a one column layout, right? The goal here is to recreate that hero. So we're gonna say, here, here's the hero, right? So structured content, so I'm gonna add some media. There's the image. I upload some stuff ahead of time just for sake of being able to say. And I'm actually outputting this, using display mode, I'll put this as a background, image, right? So, so I haven't done any theming here yet, okay? I'm just adding the structured content for things going to play. If I want to be able to edit this, because I need to finish obviously filling it out, I can then start filling that out. Let me go over to where I actually have this real quick. <clears throat> yeah, I'm doing Okay, my image. My heading, my heading alternative, I kind of flipped in the design, my teaser text, my URL, and my call to action. Okay, so when I add that to the to the page, I ha I get it here in my one column layout. Right, <coughs> here's here's the I didn't duplicated this to go ahead and create this section element. We'll come back and look at that in the section. So once I have this here, you, you, you then need to know how to do some Drupal theming. Okay. But, it, but it's not very complicated that. If you have Twig the bug turned on, and by the way, yeah, I'll get, I'll get your question. So I just found this out today. I'm sure it's been there since Drupal 10 came out. Did you know you can turn Twig debug on through the interface now? 10.1. 10 10.1, 10 thank you. Thank you whoever did that, because I got oh, tired of settings and local oh, files so like, yeah, turning that on. Question back there real quick. Do you add uh, classes to the sections or the columns? Good question. I'll show you an advanced one on that. So there is a, so the question was, can you add CSS and stuff to the sections? Yes, you can. So there is a couple different things. <clears throat> there for the sections themselves, which are considered layout, um, layouts, there is a module called layout options, which if you've used layout builder, you may have been familiar with it, that allow you to actually be able to add additional options to the layout. So if I click on this layout here, you see this right here, it says layout options. 
That's what you get out of boxes, administrative labels, as you know, good, but you can add to this with the layout options. Respectively, you can also do it for your components, and there's another module called, which, I, which I don't install for the demo, but I'll show you on UCLA, called style options. How many of us here back in the, back when you were creating paragraphs would always add those additional fields to actually have the CSS come here? So configuration, went in the database. Style options is a single YAML file that you create all your, all your configuration in that you can then expose to your paragraph types. So now it's not in the database and it's versioned. Yay, style options. <coughs> Um, so let's take a look at this real quick. So I want to, I'm going to go into code here. <clears throat> and so <clears throat> right now I'm just getting the, the default paragraph. Okay. So if I go ahead and take a look at this <clears throat> layout here, what I do when I'm looking at USWS is I literally will go and take a look at, okay, well, where is that at? So it's over here under templates. It's the landing page that we were taking a look at. I'll click on this, actually pull it up. This is what I'm trying to recreate, right? All this is using is, is US, USA prefixed um, classes to be able to provide, and I'm sorry, this is a little small, but to provide you with layouts, with the color schemes, with the typography, um, and you can go look at this in, in deeper. All I'm really doing is literally taking this and copying and pasting it in, looking at the structured content, adding those fields in to where I then end up with something that looks like this. Here's the key. When you're look, looking at layout paragraphs, <laughs> don't get rid of this div with the attributes, okay? Because that's what layout paragraphs do, is to give you the little interface that you can say edit, delete, move up and down, right? So notice here, and kind of counterintuitive to the way I'm used to doing things, so here's my section, okay, it's from top to bottom. Um, and I'm automatically dropping in a class of the USA Hero, the introduction. We'll look at the background image in a minute. It has a class of grid container, handles that. The structured content that was in there outside of the image has my heading, my heading all. And so I'm just dropping in content dot, whatever the field is. How many people here are familiar with Twig field value module? So Twig field value allows you to go and grab that string representation, which is good about 95% of the time. There is exceptions where you don't want to do that. <laughs> um, so that's why you'll see this. What? And then the hardcore themers will be like, why not just use render? That has its benefits and, and, and downfalls as well. So I'm just used to using um, Twig field value on this. All let's do is printing out those values that are in the database, right? So I'm getting my... <coughs> Getting my alternative text, I'm getting my image, I'm getting my heading, teaser, getting my call to action. But by the way, <clears throat> this is something that I generally do. Because I need to actually not have this render the full link for me, I will go into the manage display. So if you're not familiar with this, I'll go into the manage display of. Press a new tab. How am I doing on time? Five minutes. Oh, okay. Oh, seven minutes. All right. I'll, I'll go into the, the hero here from the managed fields for the managed display, and I will actually say separate the link text in the URL. That way I actually have the values for both those. I can build my link on the fly. I can add that, add that class to it. Okay. So in, in doing that, I then have the ability to build that out. I'm going to let me do this real quick. Sorry, Sean, do that for the win. <laughs> okay, it's a little squish, right? Because I'm because I'm constrained in there. Boom! There is the US Web Design System as a structured component using lay layout paragraphs, and I can move this up and down on the, on the page how I want, right? So, for instance, if I say edit content. And I can say, you know what, I really didn't want that to be a one column, I want that to be in a two column. Great. Let's go put this in a two column, it's going to look really funky. <laughs> okay. And it's pseudo responsive. And but the nice thing about layout paragraphs is I can go, you know what, let's move it over here. Boom, now it's moved over there. Oh, you know what, let me duplicate that. Now I can go here and add another section. Now, does that, that creates an entire new paragraph component? Or is it still a reference to the same? Still reference to the same so section. So you one, and it will update the yeah. other one too. Yep. So there's the there's the three there. So then I can take and move this 
down there, and then I could, you know, du duplicate this two more times, <laughs> drag it over there, drag it over there. So now you can start seeing like how like quickly you can start build, building these things out. Can you and get over there? Edit one of them. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Let's change the text or something. Um, right here, so I get spelled it. Okay, so they're individual paragraph types. Okay, so well, what I'm about okay? Because this is the block block pro block person, right? What if I want that to be reused on multiple things? Anybody here use paragraph library? Boom, issue solved. Now that's now I can reuse that across. What does that do? Oh, so paragraph library. Let me flip over here for sake of time. So let me go to med school. <clears throat> so I'm already logged in. So this whole page right here is laid out using layout paragraphs. Different components on the page, different layouts on the page. Looks fantastic, by the way. Right, so let me, I was logged in earlier, but hold on real quick. <laughs> While you're getting logged in there, <coughs> yes. to follow on to the question about CSS, where um, the, the CSS that would manage the grid view of those multi-column layouts, yep. where is that specified? Yep. I think we have a break after this, so I can probably keep going a little bit longer if I need to, <laughs> luckily. So, um, so let, me, let me get back to that question. Let me answer the paragraph library question first. And so, if we go over here and take a look at this section here under contents as paragraphs, this is a library of paragraphs that with different component paragraph types that someone can use. And because we have an entity, um, entity, um, oh my gosh, help me out here. Entity reference revision. Yes. Entity, there's, I can't remember the name of the module. Entity uh, clone? No, I can see exactly how many pla different places this is actually used. Is it just any usage? Any usage, thank you. Uh, and I can click on that number and then it actually shows you. So it's used four times actually on this particular page. And so that's the nice thing about it. But since these are in a library, if I actually go over here and let's actually create real quick a, a demo page on med school. But it doesn't tell you where they were used. Yeah, it did. Go show you the individual pages? Yep. On the same page. Yeah, we'll go back. Oh. That takes me to the page where it's being used. But it said it was used four times in the noise. It's using me four times on that same page. Ah. Um, so that's the library. So it allows you to build things from the library. And so whenever you actually create a paragraph type. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'm in draft mode here, so. That's it. Not just a live demo. Do it live. Like, you know, yeah. yeah. We'll do it live. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 Let's do it live. Exactly. Yeah. So when I go to add actual paragraph type, um, there is, um, this one actually doesn't have it. Some of them have the option on there that says add to library when I'm creating it. I can also go to the library and actually create over there, but it gives me more of the back end look when I do it. Um, and so then next to the next question, so notice the layout options on this component. I can specify the type of alert, I can specify the spacing on that. Then if I go take a look at the actual section itself, Six. it also has what I want this to be full width. I mean, it breaks out of the edges, yeah as well as the spacing and then in the content region if this is a one column layout I can specify break this into columns and it'll use grid to break whatever the item is in there into however many it can fill up. So where does that come from? So if I take a look here real quick. Let me get rid of timeline. So like I said there's two different mod modules, layout options okay, and style options. So for the section layout, those options you saw in here and as I said it's in a single YAML file. 
you're just specifying, hey, that this is a spacer. The title's called spacer. <coughs> um, here's it's a layout options of a class select. I mean, so it'll give me um, the ability to add classes doing this. And then what are the classes? This is the actual class, CSS mm -hmm. class itself, and this is the actual user-friendly name for that. And so this automatically adds it to the template. I'll show that to you in a second real quick as well. And then for the actual component itself, something very similar, this is called style options. And so for that alert we were just looking at, we say, hey, this alert, alert has alert type. This is, um, it's defaults to the label of none, but if they actually didn't want to choose a label of error, this is the class that it actually gets. And so you can see this file is pretty full because there's all the components and the styling in there. And if I go down to the very bottom, um, you can see for the alerts, the machine name is SF underscore alert. The options it has available to it are alert type and spacer, and those are set to true. So that gives you, gives you those. And then you just pull those into the Twig template for those components and they come in as attributes. So that's why I said don't delete attributes on the div because that's where it comes in at. And then I just use, using component-based design, I'm able to then turn around. And, uh, and by the way, we pulled Pattern Lab automatically into this through the admin UI now. Sorry? I said, if, I don't know if you just noticed that, we have actually added to the admin UI a link right to Pattern Lab, which then pulls Pattern Lab right oh, into cool. it. So I go look at the alert component. There's the other component. Pa so I get my proponent pattern lab, soon to be a proponent storybook once I figure it out. <laughs> um, so this is where we manage all the components for that. That was a lot to cover. I kind of dove deep in there because I got passionate and someone asked a question. So it's your fault because you asked the question. <laughs> what? So this reminds me a lot of Panelizer. Yes. And the problem that we had with that is revisions yep. and difference between revisions at the entity level and revisions on the layout and the two UIs. So yep. how does that work? How's that been for you? I have not run into any issues in the medical side here. It's probably the largest UCLA website that I, I've seen. And it's handled no differently than the way blocks handle revisions and, and because it's using layout discovery to actually manage the layout. Have you, are you familiar with uh, I-10 Design Group's uh, Mercury project? Yes, have yeah. you used that at all? So we're getting ready to turn that on. So um, Sean brought up, have you, Mercury Editor. So this is Atten's new iteration of even bubbling this up a little bit more for the front end. Um, it actually adds um, at the top here like a, a save and a done button um, we'll open it with a mixture of layout paragraphs that layout options field set is now actually a tab at the top that says separated by content and styles, which makes it even better, you guys. So on first, hold on. <laughs> um, you said that you don't need to go all in, you can start small, start building a library of components. What does that actually look like switching? Can you, is that something that you can explain in another Good question? Much? Yep, so back over so on. Doing it so, yeah, so back over in the, the, the first example, US web, so I'm in the med school's uh, coder here. So over another code, I just had that component sitting over in the same folder. It wasn't nested, it wasn't using post CSS or SAS or anything like that. So that's what I'm saying. You can start small, just just modify your paragraph file or your, or your tweak template. In this case, it was a paragraph, so that, remember, modify that paragraph tweak template. Um, I had an attached library at the top of that tweak template, which is pointed to a CSS file, which was in the library. In fact, let me just pull that because. I'm a visual person, so what I probably said just confused you. And it, um, if it didn't, great, but I would have confused myself. <laughs> so let me go um, code, training, you know, demo. There we go. Let me open this up real quick. So this is my, my Twig template, right? So it's, it's just sitting inside of my paragraphs folder, okay? Didn't do anything really componentizing at that other than setting up, but for sake of time, so we kind of veered off space. But now, unless you have a components folder called USA-Hero.Twig, and in there is where I've moved that to, okay? And then if you look at this right here, this is where I've said, and this is, this is, tr this is just tr Twig out of the box, all right? I said, hey, when that paragraph renders, go look inside this components folder this is using the components module to, to handle the namespacing. Go look in there, call this twig file, and pass to these static keys 
these dynamic values. So this is why I'm saying now, now you can have this components folder. We're not using Parallel Storybook, single directory components, UiPath, anything. I'm just doing this straight up, really small, um, for in this case. But you can then take that and build upon it. You can move that into a single directory component structure. You can move that into a UI pattern component structure. You can move that into a pattern lab um, structure component. So if you take a look at what we've done here for Surface, okay, there's the paragraph alert. Okay, it's looking at components, alert, alert, that twig, pass into it, these key values. And so that's actually referencing this patterns components folder. And inside here, this is where I've started breaking everything down. There's the alert. There's the alert.twig with the attached statement. I'm not breaking anything Drupal wise, still probably passing in attributes, adding classes to the attributes that I need, the structures there. But then I can go one step further. And so when you're able to see it rendered in Pattern Lab, I have a YAML file, which is static key values. And then I have variations, which are just modifiers of that. And then in, also in there here, I have my, my post CSS files, and then that's using NPM, package, gulp, compiling, doing linting, all pretty fine on all that stuff. That would be like taking to the next level, and then very something similar that would be Storybook, and Storybook you can also still use Twig, but now you're introducing JavaScript, obviously, <laughs> more heavily into it, yeah. Process change. You go to a client, you give them the wireframe, the design, they approve it, you do a Figma. Yep. Now what do you do? Because now there's not static design for each page type. Right, so Pixel, so right? We did, did a Pixel for, for food safety inspection services for USDA. Um, we created the, the, the Figma file or a DexD file, I don't remember which one's apples and oranges. Created that design, they approved off on that design, and then we turned around and started taking a look and said, okay, what in there is components? And we started breaking it down to what we did there. And, started, and we did it with using Time Lab and built out those different components. The nice thing about that is that component folder has CSS, JavaScript, Twig, and YAML. I could technically take that and pull it out in the next project. You don't have to account for layout permutations? Nope. No, no. All right. Thank you, everybody. Sorry we went over.